Hello, it's Simon from Odd Planet Studios again. Today I'm going to show you the version 2 of this little thing, which is the DI Winder from Friendly Beans. First I'll show you the, the changes that have been made um, from version 1 to version 2, and then I'll take you through the assembly and some of the little wrinkles that uh, you need to watch out for when you're putting these together. So let's look at some of the uh, some of the differences. You can see actually that the the broadly they're very similar size, but the the rack is a little bit wider in the new version, and this is because it's got a herringbone on it. And what that does is it, it centres the uh, the rack when you're stopping and starting and moving the rack along. It doesn't veer off to one side, so it's much more accurate. And you can see that inside the um, uh, the gear wheels are quite a bit wider than the original ones in Mark I. Um, apart from that, the most obvious difference is in the locking nut. And instead of pressing against the side of the rack, which is what the original um, version 1 did, this one locks the, uh, the follower gear. So the knob is just turned and the whole thing is locked solid. And those are the principal differences. In fact, if anything, it's a little bit simpler. There's one other little thing which I think is a major step forward. For the drive wheel, what he's done is he's inserted a, a nut into here, which is why you've got a funny sort of U-shaped um, or D-shaped um, aperture on one side of the drive wheel. So you, what you do is you drop a, an M3 nut down into there, and then you put a grub screw through the hole and that engages, if you, you, you file a flat onto the bolt and that will engage on that bolt and uh, lock very solid. The other thing we've worked on is that the if the drive wheel is loose at all you're going to have problems. So this one here is um, an earlier version and the drive wheel is a little bit loose on the shaft and that's an issue because it means that when the grub screw presses against one side, it offsets the drive wheel a little bit and that leads to hard spots when you're rolling along the rack. So instead of that, what we've got is a, a very tight, in fact I'm just screwing this on, uh, it's a very tight hole and that's going to need just a tiny bit of filing, just enough to allow the, the bolt to pass through. No more than that. So, let's get assembly. The first task is to put these little nuts in, and there's eight that go all around. And Luke's used these internal pockets, which are great, but here's a tip. Before you start, make sure that you've got them all properly cleaned out. These ones in particular seem to have a little bit of crud in them. Maybe it's just the way my printer works or whatever. So just making sure that there's nothing in the bottom of them will mean that the nut... There's a little bit of rubbish coming out. Well, that'll mean that the nut will sit properly and you can get the bolt right through. It's really important to do that. If you don't, then there could be all sorts of problems. I can see I've actually got a nut already in that one there. So just clean them out, make sure that they're all nice and clean. And when you put the nuts in, just look down and check that they are squarely aligned with the holes. The sides have got to be parallel and they should drop in. If these ones are a bit loose here, it's not to worry because you can always get them back in again later. The, the critical ones are these ones here in these pockets, right down here. The next task is to get an M5 nut into that uh, pocket in there. Now, you only put one nut into, you only put it into one of the boxes, don't put it in both because the bolt goes into the other one and this is the uh, the bolt and the nut which hold the whole thing together. So that should slot into there. Probably needs turning around a bit to align it. So the sides have to be parallel, that's the that's the tricky bit. And it's got this great tendency to just move round. It goes in on one side and not on the other. But a bit of fiddling and you should get that in alright. 
here it comes there we go it's popped in and it's perfectly aligned there now Luke has provided these little plastic things and the idea is that they should be somehow they fit underneath the nut so that the nut comes up high to the um, it comes up in a, in, in a sort of raised pocket and then they drop underneath so I'm going to try that with an extra nut you're basically trying to pull the thing upwards something's happening so it's just you can see that that's coming out it's, I'm just gonna have a look in here yeah that nut is lifting yep definitely lifting this is good news we can now undo that and then it's possible to put this little plastic piece in All right this is very fiddly Ah, oh, here we go. Here we go. Pick that up. Right now, that should be should be possible just to push that right in there, and it does. Look at that. That's fantastic. So, what that does is it stops the nut from dropping down and from coming out of position. So that one is perfect. The um, M3s have a similar sort of pocket arrangement, so they've got to go in here, like that, they always, always rotate. There we go. When it's perfectly aligned, it suddenly pops into position. So I think we have to do the same thing with a nut and a bolt and tighten that in. So once again, it's a case of just lifting it by using that nut there. So I think my conclusion about these little plastic inserts, these retainers, is that they're a bit of an optional extra. They're a nice to have. If you can get them in, that's great. And you can see I've got that one and I put the shorter one into there, which is, is not clever. Um, it's OK on this one, but if you did it in here, it will be interfering with the with the wheels so watch out for that the m5 one is good because that drives it up into its pocket and i think because it's that much bigger it's a lot easier to get in but as long as the nuts are secure staying put then you don't really need to worry too much about that see because the, the the risk is that the that the nut comes loose or comes out of alignment when you've got all of the the drive wheels in and if you if you've got that then you're going to have to take the whole thing apart again just to get that wretched nut in back into position assembling the um, the drive wheel is very very simple you just pop your m5 bolt into there and then there's this little screw in plastic insert which fits into there and you can just screw that thing down And it secures it in position. It's really clever. And then over the top, you can put the the little friendly beans cover, which is rather nice. What I've also done, and this is one I've made earlier, is to file away a flat. Where let's find. There's your grub screw. So you want to measure. It's about 15 millimeters down, something like that. And file a decent amount off. File the the. Um, the threads right away and then you've got a flat surface for that grub screw to to bind to so the next thing is to get a nut down into here into this cavity in the drive wheel when you're fitting the nut into here you want to push it down and then you've got to insert uh, an m3 um, screw into there one little tip is to put a, a small screwdriver into the hole just so that the nut doesn't doesn't tip and uh, create problems and then you can tighten the you can tighten up the bolt and that pulls the nut into its socket obviously this is really important here because otherwise you're not going to get the shaft through there we go it now we can insert our little grub screw 
which needs to have a flat bottom to it, by the way, not a, not a point. They are very tricky, these ones. There we go. There it is. That's it. Now, this hole here is very tight on the uh, on the bolt, and that's as it should be because if it's loose, then you're going to get a little bit of offset and some problems with the with the wheel and just want it enough. In fact, if you can if you can thread it on, that's quite a good way of of doing it because you can then remove the the threads as it were. It takes a bit of plastic off. Just filing it away a little bit. There we go. That's lovely. So that is nice and solid there. And I've made a little mark where opposite the, the flat, the bearing fits into the casing and we then put our, if we get it properly aligned, we pop the, the gear onto it and then we just tighten up. So we do it through this gap here, tighten that down onto the shaft. That is really solid now. We're not relying on, on thread locker anymore. This is really not going to go anywhere. So that's great. And that's all there is to that one. The, uh, the next thing is to insert the follower wheel. Now, th th don't forget to make sure that the effectively the arrows on the gear wheels are fo pointing in the same direction. So it can only go one way up, otherwise the whole thing jams and it won't work. All you have here then is a couple of the uh, of the bearings which fit into the wheel. Now they're quite a loose fit so you've got to somehow get it all together and then then you put the lid on so it may require several hands. Right this is the little uh, um, a little piece which slots into here just a little round bit with three lugs on it so just click that into place and then the next thing you're going to do is to try to put this in but of course if the bearings are just dropping out it is a bit problematic so what I recommend doing is actually installing it on the here we go on the backing plate and then you can uh, then you can put the the bolt through and there's the bolt it has a little plastic printed washer this one here which fits on as well that's really important because what that does is to keep the the follower gear away from the surface of the, uh, the casing and therefore it runs nice and freely so that fits on there it just gives half a mil clearance something like that and then you can put your now we've got to make sure it's the right way around so it's going to go that way so that goes on first and then that goes on there and then there's one more bearing that fits into here <laughs> that one's going to drop out as well so we've got to somehow fit it all together and the way to do it is to put it on that way up there we go so now we should have both of these in the right direction and the only thing we really need to do is just to put the lock handle on to secure it before we run the M3s through for the casing. But there we go, everything's together. So the lock handle also should have an M5 nut in it. And oh, there's one thing I ought to tell you about the lock handle. There's a little bit of a gotcha when you're 3D printing. If you if you print it the wrong way up, if you print it like that on the on the surface of your your print bed, then what happens is that it gets really rather mushy and horrible in there because it's all not touching the uh, the print bed. You really need to print it this way up, and that means that you have to have a support. So here's the support all around it, and I haven't taken it off this one because I thought it might be useful just to uh, to show it, um, and. 
here it is so we'll just remove that and that comes away so that bit's junk there that comes away and the most important thing is that the hex shape in the top is perfect so that you can get your nut down with the other ones the hex shape's not so good and worse than that the bit at the bottom that actually holds the um, holds it all together is really rather badly printed so watch out it is a bit of a gotcha that one it certainly got me so then we need to pull that one through with an m5 bolt so i've put the lock handle into position and just tightened it down a little bit and you can see the m5 nut right in the bottom there and that means i can then just drop in the bolts which should screw into those nuts we positioned earlier. So if the nuts aren't quite perfectly aligned, you will get difficulties putting those bolts right in. Hopefully, they will be trapped in position. There we go. These are a lot easier because obviously you've got access to the nuts there. That's nice. And the last one. Once again. Yep. Okay. So that should turn easily and we can check that the whole thing works by running it through. It's lovely and smooth this one. This is great. So the last thing that we need to do is to put in the brake. Now the brake is this little item here which just presses up against the bottom of the rack and, uh, and it just it gives it a little bit of friction. So what Luke has um, specified is some, um, some PTFE. So that just gets stuck straight onto the, uh, the brake. Mine isn't quite as wide, it doesn't really matter. And it then gets put, placed inside so you can slot that in. And what holds it up against there is two more screws which fit in here. If in your 3D printing you end up with a little bit of elephant's foot, which is where the, the first layer tends to splurge outwards a tiny bit, it's important to take that off with the rack because otherwise it won't fit very neatly into the cavity there. It will tend to bind on the sides. With the racks, you just take some M6 threaded rod, which is at least as long as the rack, and you coat it with a little bit of WD-40, and then you take an electric drill and just drive it in nice and slowly into the rack itself and uh, you will be able to screw it all the way in and you'll feel when it gets to the end. When you've done that you just cut it off and um, finish it off smoothly there. It does make it nice and stiff. I have to say it's, um, it's very good and there's a little bit of extra sort of weight to it. Um, but having said that, if you don't put the the metal inside it's not bad it's not that bad it will obviously only be good for something lightweight but you know it's it's still serviceable so you can then adjust these screws until you've got your tension just how you like it give it a good old back and forward just to loosen that up and there it is. That's the basis of it. These two holes here are for some more bolts and they will fit a bracket um, which you can put on there, um, which I've designed or there are other things that can fit onto there, uh, again, which Luke has designed so that you can, um, 
you can mount the box somewhere. But uh, most importantly, you have a bolt that goes through which joins two of them together and they join up like that. The bolt goes through and anchors the, the two boxes together so you've got a, a horizontal and a vertical one. There are some little brackets um, which fit onto the end and um, tighten up with an M3 bolt and nut and then into here you can actually add a little um, threaded piece of uh, M3 and perhaps with a, um, a you know an M6 ball on the end or whatever fitting you want in order then to attach to your puppet or um, set element so th this is really adjustable and um, you can just take it on and off as you choose it also potentially acts as a stop so you could put it up against the box and then you know that that's the last place where your your box can uh, can reach and you can go backwards and forwards and there is your end stop so that's a, a handy thing as well so it's worth printing off several of these the other thing that I haven't really mentioned much is this little crosshair in here which I've printed off in orange I think I'm going to re redo it and do it in uh, in white but that um, gives you a little bit of a visual indicator against this scale which is printed on the side of the um, of the rack itself so with the um, the base Luke's made another little improvement it's still using the the wedge system where that fits down in there this is nice and tight this time which is great but what he's also added is a couple of holes for m3 grub screws to go in and I think that's really handy because that means that you can make sure that that base is absolutely rigid. I had a few criticisms of the last design that the, the wedges were a bit loose and I had to add some bits of plastic in to, to get it properly tight. But this time it's really solid. So what's my verdict? Well, it's a lot smoother. It's, it's got a really nice action. It doesn't wobble from side to side, I think that the, the addition of this um, herringbone rack to it is a really good one. Uh, the box is pretty much the same size, it's just a little bit wider. Uh, I think it's slightly longer, but it's, it's great. And I think that the locking mechanism is really good this time. It's very, very positive and uh, it doesn't tend to skew the, uh, the rack at all. Of course, this isn't a metal uh, rack and pinion winder. It isn't the um, uh, the sort of thing that you will pay, you know, 150 pounds for. But I mean, who cares? This is this is fantastically useful. You can print off several of them and have them for doing all sorts of things, like like opening doors and stuff like that on set. So they're very very handy indeed. And here's a last little tip: just put some black paint into the um, into the cavities where the uh, the markings are. And it'll show up quite nicely and, um, and give you a good contrast with the crosshair. Well, I hope you found that useful. Uh, there'll be links uh, down below in the text uh, to where you can get these from and um, uh, also links to my website and uh, Facebook page and all of that if you want to have a look at what I've been doing as well. Mm -hmm.